In this episode, a best friend's exclusion from a wedding sparks family drama. Unravel the unexpected twists as a man stands up for his rock-solid bond, risking his mother and sister-in-law's disapproval. But first, am I the butthole for telling my mother-in-law to please keep her criticisms to herself and eventually for kicking her out of lunch? Posted by Adventurous Anton 1546. I, 32-year-old female, am a mom to a beautiful little girl, 6-year-old female, and she has been telling me all about a new cafe that her friend went to which serves princess cakes. She says it is very fancy and people only go for special occasions when they can dress up. I had a look online and they specialize in high teas. It looked lovely, and I knew it would make my daughter happy, so I booked a table. Unfortunately for me, this place is brand new and very popular, so I, while I initially wanted to book for Mother's Day in a couple of weeks, I could only arrange a table for today. I thought we could still do it as an early Mother's Day celebration, so I also invited my mom, 60-year-old female, and my mother-in-law, 64-year-old female. My daughter was so excited she wore her favorite dress and told everyone that she would be just like a princess. It was lovely to share her joy. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, was not so thrilled. Now it is important to note that while my mother-in-law has a heart of gold, she is very salt of the earth and is quite frugal. I genuinely don't mean this as a criticism, it is just who she is. Despite it being my treat, my mother-in-law insisted that the whole thing was a waste of money, that the cakes were beyond ridiculous in their size, and it was all a bit pretentious. She is obviously entitled to her opinion, but I could clearly see that her comments were sapping some of my daughter's joy. Even when my daughter said that this is what princesses eat, after a comment about how ridiculous it all looks, my mother-in-law said that princesses would want a proper meal, and not something that is fit only to feed birds. Eventually I asked my mother-in-law to accompany me to the bathroom, and I asked her to please keep her criticisms and negative comments to herself. We were trying to have a nice day together, but more importantly my daughter had really been looking forward to this, and it was difficult for her to enjoy when someone is constantly acting negatively. My mother-in-law said that I was giving my daughter far too much credit, she wouldn't understand half of the criticisms, and even if she did, it is important that she understands the value of money. Eventually, I asked her to please leave, if she couldn't let my daughter enjoy herself, which is what she did. Now my mother-in-law is telling the family that I cut her out of the Mother's Day celebration because she was too frugal and wouldn't pander to a child. I know she is being ridiculous, but my husband is saying I could have just kept the peace for a couple of hours, but I instead chose to act drastically. He said the family being together is more important than whether someone feels a restaurant is overpriced. Did I act drastically? Was I the butthole? So what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. It's unfortunate that a mother's attempt to create a special moment for her daughter was overshadowed by another adult's negative comments and unwillingness to appreciate the experience. A comment from Strapo. Not the butthole and your husband is 100% wrong. I hate this notion that family being together is more important. No, it is not. In this case, if someone is being rude throughout the meal, you should get them to leave. Why excuse their bad behavior? If mother-in-law was spewing racist comments throughout the meal, no one would be saying, oh, just keep the peace. It's more important for family to be together. No, it isn't. Not if you're making everyone else uncomfortable. Please show this to your husband. Review Akhenan 129 commented. Not the butthole. People who crap all over a young child's joy are the ones being buttholes and deserve appropriate responses. This was an appropriate response to a killjoy. Would have been nice for your husband to be more supportive of you and his child as well. Am I the butthole for telling my in-laws there will be no wedding if my best friend female is not invited? Posted by Wise Association, 404. Me, male, my wife Nancy and my best friend Alex, female, are all in our early 30s. Nancy and Alex know each other and even hang out alone and have their girl time when Alex comes to visit as she lives in different country. Now me and Alex used to date back in the high school, but broke up before we turned 18 as we found we want different things in life. However, despite the breakup, we became best friends and never displayed anything romantical towards each other. She is like a sister to me. She supported me when I was in prison, lost relatives, and through a lot of other hardships before I met Nancy. She is my rock and the person I am comfortable to open up to, and she also gives advice if I mess up with Nancy and explains why I am an idiot. It is also important that she has a long-term partner who both me and Nancy get along well. Now to the problem, me and Nancy are getting married in a couple of months and I have noticed that we haven't received RSVP from Alex. My future mother and sister-in-law were in charge of invitations, so I have messaged Alex to see if she received anything and what her answer will be. 
Alex confirmed she and her partner would be happy to attend and how excited she is to see me and Nancy getting married. I have contacted my in-laws and asked why Alex haven't received an invitation and have tried to be as polite as possible, thinking it might just be an issue with delivery or lost in mail, but both mother-in-law and sister-in-law have told me they have never sent an invite as they believe my friendship with Alex is inappropriate and I would be disrespecting Nancy by having Alex in our wedding. I was confused as Nancy is also really excited to see her as they grew close. I have tried to reason with them, but they basically said if I invite Alex, they won't come to the wedding. I have checked with Nancy and she is visibly upset about the whole deal as she doesn't think it is fair to leave Alex out. Here where I can be in butthole, after some consideration and discussion with Nancy, I have sent my in-laws a message saying there will be no wedding if they are not comfortable with Alex attending. Of course it tipped them off with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law believing I am a huge butthole and spreading rumors to distant family. It is also important to know that the wedding was only happening to keep our side of the family happy, and we would prefer to elope and have small celebration at a restaurant with close friends. It's unfortunate that a long-standing friendship could potentially cause such a rift at a wedding, and it seems unfair to exclude someone who holds significant importance in the groom's life. Bulbasaur Ranch commented, I don't understand why your in-laws were given the power to make decisions on invites in the first place. I think cancelling the wedding is a bit extreme but your call. I'd just uninvite the guilty parties instead. Not the butthole. The drunk scientist commented. Why hasn't Nancy talked to her parents about this? OP replied. The first time I talked to them I haven't told Nancy that Alex haven't received an invitation. Nancy has recently started taking a new medication and going through a large number of side effects which result in her feeling overwhelmed or panic. So I'm trying to sort things without having her to be involved in any confrontations so she can get better. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Am I the butthole for asking someone why they didn't research their travel destination better? Posted by Ida Travel Planning. So I, 21-year-old female, work with this guy, 20-year-old male, named Jamie. Something important to this story is that Jamie and I are both gay. I am a lesbian that has started presenting masculinely, so I've been getting clocked, and Jamie is very feminine and flamboyant, so he also gets easily identified as well. I am very aware of the fact that people, correctly, assume I am a lesbian. It's actually been going on since before I started presenting mask, but that's its own story, and that I live in a conservative area. I stay aware of where I am and who I am around. Jamie seems to as well, except apparently when he leaves the country. We were chatting in the back while doing some work and he told me he'd taken a trip to Dubai a few months back, his family is well off, for a week or so to have some fun. He said it was so weird though, because everyone was looking at him funny. I asked if he dressed the same way there that he dresses here. And he said of course, I am not gonna tone myself down for nobody. I told him yeah, he doesn't have to, but that he was probably getting those funny looks because people thought he was gay and that it's illegal in Dubai. He started laughing and said that was a funny joke and I told him I wasn't joking. He was really surprised and was like are you serious? It's 2024. And I said yeah, and in 2024 there are a handful of countries where being gay is super illegal. You don't research this crap before you go places. He got upset at this point and said of course he researched, that it was a place for rich people and it looked fun, and that was it. I told him he clearly didn't research enough and that he should pay more attention before he jet sets out of the country to another place he could get arrested. He said I was being in butt, but I think he's being ignorant. Who's wrong here? It's concerning that Jamie, despite being aware of his sexuality and living in a conservative area, seemed unaware or dismissive of the potential dangers and legal consequences of being openly gay in Dubai. The importance of researching travel destinations, especially regarding human rights and safety, cannot be overstated. Strapo commented, Not the butthole. Does your friend not know there are countries where you can get the unalive penalty for being gay? The International Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Trans and Intersex Association, ILGA monitors the progress of laws relating to homosexuality around the world. It says the unalive penalty is the legally prescribed punishment for same-sex sexual acts in Brunei, Iran, Mauritania, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and in some northern states of Nigeria. In five countries, Afghanistan, Qatar, Somalia, and not to mention gays regularly get assaulted in countries where it is ostensibly okay to be gay. Napal Maxalotl commented. Not the butthole. You are correct, and he needs to know that and be more careful. Seriously, that is super ignorant. I mean, I wouldn't even bother to look up Dubai. They're so restrictive of everything else, I would just assume that. And this isn't like someone overlooking a country's human rights abuses in general. 
This is a real immediate danger to him personally. He truly needed to know this. Am I the butthole for refusing to let my stepmother be part of talking to my therapist or psychiatrist? Posted by Outrageous, Wolf 232. I, 17-year-old male, have a diagnosed mental illness. Got my diagnosis, formally at 12, and that was a crappy year for me. My dad uprooted us two months after my formal diagnosis to live with his then-girlfriend, now wife, and I left behind everyone else I knew and loved and during the move some sentimental stuff got destroyed. The stuff was my mom's and dad had put it in the wrong pile after I tagged it, so it wasn't handled with the care it should have been. I was pretty much destroyed at that point. I already hated that we were moving and then to lose some of the stuff mom loved the most. I was admittedly a mess and the next couple of years. I took forever to find a new therapist. My original psychiatrist here wasn't someone I clicked with either, and it took like a year for a new one and almost three for me to find a therapist I could talk to. I admit I am not that into Emily. I do hold resentment toward her and dad for the move. She also rubs me the wrong way, but I also admit I am not exactly super open to liking her. She's made comments about it being good that we moved so I can learn how to miss people, which is really effing insensitive, but then she seems to remember that I'll forever miss someone. She has spoken like I agreed to the move. Why did you move if you weren't going to try and enjoy it? And when I tell her I didn't agree she'd say dad made the decision and I should trust him enough to want this and give it my all. She has complained that I didn't let her family members fill the void of my missing family from here and she has seemed kinda sour that I am closest to my mom's family above everyone. We also clash over me saying she's married to my dad, my dad's wife to people instead of saying my stepmom. I said stepmother once and she told me it sounded so detached and I told her that's how I feel. It drives my dad crazy and we discussed me moving in with my grandparents back home, but dad changed his mind about it twice. He told me I am his kid and he's not letting me go and he wants to repair our relationship. He asked me to forgive him for making decisions that I felt were for the worst for me. He said he's trying to do right by us both. This is why he typically respects when I don't want to include him in my therapy sessions. But my dad is anxious that I am almost 18, and he wanted to have a meeting with my psychiatrist and therapist about me, but he wanted Emily included, and I said no, and I expressed this to both my therapist and my psychiatrist, so they won't talk with her in the room. Emily was so offended. My dad was hurt that I still wanted to shut her out and that I didn't trust his decision and partner. I told him she is not my parent and she does not get access to that stuff about me. I told him I can't stop him telling her technically but I will never give my consent for her to talk to them herself. They told me I need to let her because she's one of my guardians and it's important for them to be on the same page. Dad begged. Am I the butthole? It's concerning that Emily, who is a stepmother, feels entitled to access sensitive information about her stepson without his consent. The fact that she and the biological father are trying to force this issue despite the son's objections raises questions about their respect for his autonomy and privacy. A comment from Naked Life Coach. Not the butthole. You are allowed to have boundaries, especially for your own mental health. That said, it may be helpful to you to have a controlled environment in which you can express these things to her in front of trained professionals that can possibly mediate for her behavioral or attitudinal changes. However, you are almost 18 and a legal adult, so unless your diagnosis is such that you would still require guardianship beyond age 18, it probably isn't worth it. And even if you will need guardianship, you could petition for a court-appointed guardian. OP replied, I won't need a guardian. My dad is just nervous about what things will be like once I have full control over my life in every aspect. He wanted me to stay living with him and Emily for a while, but he knows I want to move back home. I think he also knows I won't be flying in for visits and he's trying desperately to claw at things that might make me reconsider or at least to get that forgiveness and reassurance that I'll be okay. Subscribe for more cute cats and daily Reddit stories. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a miavelous day, and see you in the next one.